Hello. In today's video, I'm going to explain how to calculate the weekly rolling average in Power BI. Here is the PBI file and I have a matrix here. In the rows, I have the week number and I have three measures. That is weekly total, three week rolling average method one and method two respectively. So the weekly total is, is just the sum of the weekly numbers, the sum of my numerator. So it's a straight calculation. So if I go back to my weekly total, you see here, it's just a sum of the numerator. So I have a column called numerator here. And three weekly rolling average method, what it does, let's say for week six, the three week rolling average is 526.67. This is the average of the last three weeks, 554 plus 543 and 483 gives me 526. Similarly, 540.33, that's for week five. It's This is an average of week five, week four and week three, okay? So it's a rolling average. So it's a little tricky because uh, unlike the daily moving averages, so weekly average, you need to first calculate the weekly totals and then you need to take the average of the three weeks, okay? So I have two methods here. So one is the this method where I use, where I pass on the week number to a variable and then call this one. And I have the second method where I use uh, the between function, dates between function. I'm gonna take you step by step on how to calculate uh, weekly average with the help of these three, these two methods, okay? So now, before I delete my data and recreate it from scratch, I'll show you my uh, data. So this is my fact table. So I don't have anything special. I just have the date, business segment, numerator, denominator, and the week number, okay? This is, this is the week number. And I have created one more uh, dimensional table that's a dim calendar so i used calendar function to auto number from 1 1 2019 until uh, the december 31 to 2019 okay so and if you look my data model i have a one to one relationship between fact and dim calendar okay so now uh, i'll delete my all my calculation and start from scratch So I have removed all the measures and let's start from scratch, okay? So let me create a new measure. And let me call this measure as three week rolling average method one, okay? And now let me hit enter. So I'm gonna create uh, a variable here. And let me call this variable as uh, week one, okay? Week underscore one equal to, first I need to calculate my date criteria. So I'm gonna use max of, I'll use my dim calendar date table, okay? And then I need to convert this into a week number. So I will calculate the week number out of this and return type, I want my week to be started on Sunday, okay? So this is my week one, okay? So that, that's my current week. So similarly, I will calculate week two equal to, let me copy this for the sake of time. And then what I will do is I'll subtract seven days from this particular calendar date. So which will give me the previous week, okay? And then again, I'm gonna insert one more variable to calculate my last week, that is minus 14, right? So I have created three variables. So now what I'll do is I will use calculate here. Calculate. 
sorry, I need to use return. Calculate expression. So I haven't deleted the weekly total. It's just the sum of numerator. So I'm going to use this one. Weekly total. And filter. I'm going to filter this based on my variables. So I already calculated the variables here. So I'll apply the filter on the fact week number. So this is my week number column in. I'm going to call this uh, variables. If I hit enter, I should be getting my totals. Okay, so let's see what we get. And then, then later on, let's modify. Okay, so now if I bring this here, I should be getting the sum of three weeks. Okay, you see, I'm getting the sum 483, 543 plus 554 gives me 1580. So I was able to calculate my sum. So now what I'll do is I need the average, right? So what I'll do, I'll make slight change to the query here. I'll create one more variable here and call this as, uh, I can name it as denominator, den equal to, I'm gonna copy the same function here. Copy this and paste it here. And instead of week total, what I'll do is, I'll use count distinct or distinct count of the fact week numerator. Okay, so it will give me the count. And then I'll use this variable denominator here. So I'll divide my weekly total by distinct count. Ideally, it should be three. But the reason I'm doing distinct count is because during the start of the week, we, not, we may not have all the historical data. It's okay until uh, week three because uh, we have week one and week two. So if I use week three, it works properly. But when the, when the start of the week, we don't have enough historical data. And if we use hard-coded three as a denominator, uh, it might be misleading. And that's the reason I'm using the denominator here. Okay, I now hit enter. Give it a second. Notice here, the numbers have changed. Let me increase this to two decimal places. So this is the first method. This is pretty easy. And when you have only three weekly rolling, it's quite simple, right? You can add three variables and do it. But let's say someone wants to create a 12 week rolling average, then you need to enter 12 variables, right? It becomes a little messy. So now what I'm gonna do is, instead of uh, doing this way, I'm gonna show you another way, okay? So now what I'll do, I'll create one more measure and let me copy the title, three week rolling average method two. So right click on the fact, new measure, three week rolling, uh, rolling average method two equal to. Here I'm not gonna create a complex variable, but I'll have only two variable, which is called my start date and end date, okay? So variable, I will call this as start day equal to, I'm gonna use minimum here of dim calendar date okay so this is this will give me the minimum of calendar date for that period for the current period but to to begin with i need i need to go uh, three weeks backwards right so to do that i am in the current week so if i subtract 14 days from the current data i'll be having my start date okay so similarly 
for the end date, I'm going to create one more variable called end day. And I'll use maximum of dim calendar date. Okay. Is equal to maximum of dim calendar date. So the, basically it'll help me to understand from what date I need to start my calculation, the sum, cal, uh, sum of the numerators and at what date I should be ending. Okay. So this is what we do here. I now using this, I will pass this to my calculation return. Here, what I'm going to do, calculate. Expression is still the same. So week, week total. So I'm going to use week total. And I'm going to use date between function. Dates between. So I'm going to use uh, the dim calendar date. Start date. So I'm going to take the start date from this variable. So use the variable start day. And then for the end date, I'm going to use the end day. Okay. So I got my weekly total. So, but a catch here is like we have the week number onto the rows. So we need to remove that filter first. So how do I do that? Let's see, uh, let's hit enter and let's see what happens. And then let's go to the next step. Okay, let me hit enter. Let me bring this to this matrix. You see the numbers are exactly the same because we have a filter applied. That's the weak number. So I'm going to remove that filter. Go back here. Remove filters from fact numerator. Okay. Now let's see what we get. I'm getting the sum for the week six thousand five eighty. So what it does, it will check what is the start date for the week four. Okay, so I'll get the start date. That's a minimum date. And then what is the max date for the week six? Okay, so I get a date range. And when I sum it up, it's thousand five eighty. Okay, so this is what I do here. I now, as usual, we need to find the denominator, right? To calculate the average. So to do that, I'll just copy the same function here. Copy this back and divide by instead of weekly total, what I'm going to use here, just change this weekly total with distinct count of the fact week numerator. Hit enter. So if you notice here, I have the same numbers, right? And it's quite dynamic. Let me increase this to two decimal places. Okay. Now we have the same numbers, right? Two different approaches. In the first method, I, I passed all the uh, weeks into the week uh, in, into these variables. And then I call this variable here. But in the second method, the second method, I pass the date range to start date and end date, and I use the dates between function, okay? And then the denominator, I use the distinct count of the, um, the weak numbers. So advantage of this method is, let's say if I was supposed to calculate um, 24 months rolling average, uh, technically, we, uh, we don't do 24 months, but let's assume that uh, somehow someone wants to see the 12 weekly rolling average. Then the first method is a little heavier, right? So it's easier to pass on to the second method. So you can just change this variable, uh, the subtraction, and then you can get your 12 week or 24 week or uh, maybe 26 weeks, whatever we need. So I would still prefer the second method if you find it the second method is complex and then you can go for the first method. So 
this is how we calculate the weekly rolling average i hope this video was helpful and if you have any questions please drop me a note in the comment section and i'm going to revert back to you okay and thanks for watching have a great day